coming out of the prison, out of bondage this morning. Hallelujah. Coming out of the grip of the enemy where there's that control that's held you back. Coming out of there. The door's open. You have a choice. Hallelujah. Come out. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I don't want anyone in that prison. I want you out of that prison. Jesus paid the highest price on the cross. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Amen. There's a woman here this morning. And the Lord wants you to know that He's going to restore the stolen years. Your stolen years. When you were growing up, God's going to restore that. Hallelujah. Come on, you've got to get more excited than that. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And someone's getting ready to have a financial breakthrough. Hallelujah. Financial breakthrough. Glory. Glory. Someone's going to be laughing all the way to the bank. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't stand in my way because I'm coming through and nothing you do is going to stop me. Stop me. Hallelujah. I see on Zoom this morning all these prison doors opening. Hallelujah. It's up to you to come out of that prison door, to come out of that prison, to come out of that prison cell that's kept you bound, oppressed, tormented, sick all day. It's your day to be free. Hallelujah. Woman, be thou loosed this morning. Woman, be thou loosed. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. And I see there's some men that have come in this place with a ball and chain. But the Holy Spirit's touching you and setting you free from dragging that ball and chain. You're going to leave this place without the ball and chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's setting me free, this Holy Ghost power. He's setting me free. There's a miracle anointing here this morning. Hallelujah. If you'll come here this morning and you need a miracle for your mind this morning, the Holy Spirit's here to touch minds this morning, to set you free, to set you free. From anxiety, depression, oppression, torment, harassment. The Spirit of the living God is here this morning to set you free. I thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're touching minds right now. That you're touching minds. That you're releasing men and women from terror, from nightmares, from fear, from dread this morning. You're setting people free. You're touching them in their minds this morning, Lord God. Hallelujah. You're delivering from that dreaded fear from that dreaded fear that they grew up in their father's house. I thank you, Lord, this morning that you're touching every mind. You're touching minds this morning, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're touching those ones that felt unprotected. There's there's men and women you felt unprotected when you were growing up. The Holy Spirit's just touching you this morning. He's doing that work inside of you. He's touching you this morning to set you free from feeling unprotected, from feeling insecure this morning. I just see shackles are breaking, chains are breaking this morning. Hallelujah. The Spirit of God is in this place. There's an anointing here and it's the yoke removing, burden destroying power of God. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. Glory, and I just see you kick a door in the Spirit. Hallelujah. You're kicking that door. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Breakthrough. Breakthrough, Maureen. Victory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. And Barry, I just hear you roaring like the lion. You're roaring and the enemy's fleeing. The enemy's fleeing. Hallelujah. And all these sons and daughters, and it's like your heart of compassion and love. And you're roaring because they've been bound, oppressed. You're roaring. Hallelujah. And their shackles are breaking. Their chains are breaking. Hallelujah. The anointing destroying the yokes of bondages this morning. Glory, glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is an amazing God. You shall recover the lost years. You shall recover the stolen years. Hallelujah. You shall recover. Amen. You shall recover. You shall recover. In Joel it says, I will restore the years that the locusts have eaten. Hallelujah. I will replace for you the years that the locusts have eaten. How good is that? That's something to to shout about. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lord. God is an amazing God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And Terry, I just get that word for you out of Daniel. Those that know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Hallelujah. 
Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. I just see you doing amazing things in the Spirit. Glory to the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Glory, glory. And Adam, I just see a light. The light of Christ is just shining, radiating, and it's going farther afield than what you realise. Just see the Lord lifting you up today. He says, son, keep going higher. Keep coming to me. And I just see God giving you keys and strategies for family and loved ones around about you. It's like your, your heart knows where they should be. God's going to give you wisdom. It's going to cut through the, their uh, thinking. It's going to cut through those mindsets and you're going to see victory. You're going to have victory. I just see a man of God. It's like there's a big entourage behind you because all these people are coming to Christ because of you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's doing a mighty and an awesome thing this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I just get that Scripture, Tamaris, with the high praises of God in our mouth and the two-edged sword in our hand. And I just see you're a woman with a two-edged sword in your hand. And you're, you're vicious in the Spirit. You're aggressive in the Spirit. You're strong, bold and aggressive. And I just see God's going to give you plunder from the enemy. You're going to get plunder. You're going to get spoils from the enemy because you're going to see battles won. You're going to have great victory. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lord. Glory, glory. I'm just thinking of men and women in this place, children being raised up, being strong, bold and aggressive. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Look at this amazing family here. Amazing family here. Hallelujah. God is doing a mighty work. I just see mighty work. Children. Hallelujah, Stacy! all your children will be taught of the Lord and great shall be your children's peace. Your children are going to be mighty in the land and their voice is going to be heard in their land. It's going to be heard in their land. And I just hear your children's voices just ricocheting through the nations. Hallelujah. God's going to do amazing things with these children. Glory, glory. They are beautiful children. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And Maria, get those words. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither let it be afraid. The Lord says, daughter, I've got a hold of your hand. I've got something better for you. Don't fear, don't worry. I'm gonna lead and guide you. When you've been going through the valley, I've been there. I've been doing a deep work in you. I've been doing a work in you that you would lean and trust me, says God, for I have plans for you that you know not of. And I'm gonna open a door for you, says God. I'm gonna open a door and you're gonna go through that door because you've asked me and you've been seeking, you've been asking, you've been knocking and I'm gonna get ready to open that door for you and you're going to walk through the door and I'm going to give you the desire of your heart. I'm going to bless you, says God. I'm going to bless you and I'm going to cause you to be a woman that's going to flourish. You're going to blossom and bloom and I'm going to cause your roots to go down deep, that you're going to be like that woman that's leaning on me, holy and solely. You're going to be leaning on me. You're going to be leaving for miracles, for your soul, for your family, for loved ones and you're going to see answers to prayer, answers to prayer. I just see the Lord's putting a new spring in your step and He's going to bring you into a new place in Him where you're just going to be so dependent on Him and you're just going to rest in Him. It's going to be like a child that's been weaned uh, from her mother, a uh, child. And I just see you're just going to trust in God. You're not going to fret over the future, but you're just going to trust wholly in the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just get that scripture in Hebrews, Trish, looking away from all that would distract and looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of your faith. Just see that the Lord's speaking to you this morning, speaking to your heart. He wants you to look away from all the things that want to be a distraction, all the things that want to divert you from walking on that narrow path, because the path that... uh, is narrow, very few walk on that. The wide path of destruction, there's many that travel on that. But I just see the Lord's bringing you into a closer a walk with Him, into a place of intimacy with Him that you've never experienced before. And the Lord's just hovering over you. And there's, a, I just see like a river, a river that's getting ready to flow in an awesome way out of you and a new boldness and a new confidence in your God. And you're just gonna be a woman that's gonna cast all your cares upon the Lord because you're gonna have a revelation that He cares 
cares for you watchfully, that He cares for you affectionately. And you're going to see changes in loved ones, even those ones that have wounded you severely. You're going to see God moving. You're going to know God's answering your prayers. You're going to know that everything that God has for you is on time. It's like a revelation that you're going to receive from God. There's going to just come such a knowing in the Spirit. You're going to know that you're going to know. Hallelujah. And, and Judy and Julie, oh, hallelujah, the Lord loves you. And I just see it's been a difficult time. It's been a hard time. It's been like you've been going through a deep, dark valley, not knowing what the next day will bring. But the Lord sees the end from the beginning. And I just see He's, He's bringing you closer. All these things that have taken place to bring you closer. The crisis that have taken place, it's to bring you closer. It's to cause your roots to go down deep. And everything that's been happening, it's like the winds of adversity have been blowing. And, and I just see the Lord wanting you to know that He's your rock, He's your stabiliser, He's your anchor to take a hold of Him and He's going to bring you through. He's going to bring you through. And I just see Julie, God's bringing you into a place you've never been in before. It's like you've had to become dependent on Him, you've had to trust Him and He's going to bring emotional healing in loved ones, emotional healing in loved ones. And there's where there's been trauma and shock, just see the Spirit of God just pouring in healing balm and you're just going to know that God has, has intervened in those six situations and circumstances. Hallelujah. Like the old song goes, because He lives, I can face tomorrow. Because He lives, all fear is gone. Hallelujah. God is an amazing God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And Lena, I just see like an eagle. The Lord's, the Lord's teaching you how to, how to soar, how to soar above your problems, how to soar above the difficulties and the things that have come around you. He's going to teach you to begin to lift up those wings because they're big wings. They're big wings. They've been developed not just yesterday. They've been developing for many years. And the Lord wants you to lift, begin to lift up those wings, begin to take advantage of the wind that begins to blow. Instead of going down, it's time for you to go up. It's time for you to soar higher than the storms of life, than what the voices are speaking. It's time for you to soar. I just see as a woman of the Spirit, God wants you to rise up, rise up on the wings of an eagle and begin to soar and break through, break through because there's a breaking, there's a breakthrough anointing upon your life. God's given you the key of intercession that will unlock the prison doors in the lives of those loved ones. And it's not a time to sit back. It's not a time to say, God, just take me home. I can't deal with all this. God says, daughter, begin to rise up, rise up you people of power. Rise up, you people across the land. It's time for you to rise up. Hallelujah. Rise up out of the ashes. Rise up out of that prostration and depression that de that situation, circumstances have kept you. It's time to rise, to shine to a new life. Be radiant, be glorious this morning. Hallelujah. Because God is with you. Well, give, give the Lord a clap. To Lord. Hallelujah. We're so blessed having Having Yara, my wife, in this church here, amen. amen. Hallelujah, amen. Give the Lord a clap for Yara, amen. amen. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. The words that she speak, it come into past church, one after the other, the words that she speak. Take heed to the words. There were so many testimonies. Uh, Bill, is Bill here? Bill um, and Mandela, they got a word. Yara just gave a word. She said that there is a, people are fly, flying. She said, she actually sang it. I'm living on a jet plane. And uh, we shared that testimony. Uh, and Bill, Bill was here, or I, I don't know whether he was on, on Zoom, but he shared it, I think, last Sunday night. He, sh he shared that testimony about uh, his boss came to him and he's going to spend $5,000 on him for him to fly to New, New Zealand with his wife. And he's really living on a jet plane. Amen? <laughs> Yara just says those words. And she just told it to everybody and Mandela and Travin as well. Uh, you want to share that testimony quickly? They, they, they were on Zoom as well. Just pick up the words where the other speaks. Um, two Sundays ago at night, <clears throat> we were on Zoom and Pastor Yara gave a word that she sees people going on holidays. So Trevin and I just put our hand up towards the screen and we said, yes, God, we believe and we receive. Monday morning, got a phone call from my dad and he said, when is school holidays? I want to book for you guys to go away to the Gold Coast. So we're going after church today. We're going to spend <clears throat> three nights and four days at the Gold Coast and a buffet seafood dinner tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> 
I didn't, I didn't even know about today till, till she just mentioned it. But this is all a move, moving of the Spirit of God. And when Yana said some are going to live on a plane and there are others as well, uh, but Yana said some are going to travel as well. So she, instantly her father gave. And then your mom, mom gave you a call too, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Um, just after I hung up the phone with my dad, my mum calls and says, I want to pay for you guys to go away at the Gold Coast um, over the school holidays. And I said, don't worry, mum. I just got off the phone with dad and, you know, he's taken care of it. So... <laughs> A double portion, amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, yeah, I know, her kind heart, you know. Thank you, Jesus. But you'll get more because of your heart attitude as well. I would have said, okay, I wouldn't mention about dad. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> okay, mom. <laughs> Don't worry about this date, but I got another date. <laughs> <laughs> Always don't use your gift for an advantage. I need to repeat that again. Don't use your gift and your talents for your advantage. Jesus, you know Jesus, he took loaves of bread and fish and he could have made a fish factory and a bakery straight away. He blessed it, lifted it up to the Father, fed the 5,000. But when he was tempted by the enemy, the devil told him to turn and he was, he was, he was fasting, he was hungry. You know when you're hungry, you can smell food. And the devil knows when to put the food and the curry in front of you. So he told Jesus, you know, turn this loaf of bread. You know, because you got the power to do it. And Jesus could have made a bread factory just there because he was hungry. He had the power, but he did not use his talents for his advantage. Good one to, good one to stick on the fridge. Amen. Don't use your talents for your advantage. Uh, we have learned a lot about this through School of the Prophets and so on when we were... Yara and I was under ministry, you know, there are, because the gifts, gifts and talents will operate without repentance. I've said it many a times, I'll say it again, because there was somebody will have to listen to me again. Uh, you can sing like a trooper, and you can prophesy like a trooper as well. Right, that's a good one to write down as well. Because you come to Jesus and you say, Lord, I prophesied in your name and I cast out demons in your name. We'll talk about that one, why, why they don't. Because it's not, don't use the gifts. There are prophets who have come, they, they, they pick blonde women to prophesy on. They use their gift to draw people or take their, take their money off their pocket. And they use your gifts for your advantage. They are precious gifts given by God for you. And treasure that gift. And hold it close to God. And every time something happens, from your heart, worship the King. I'm learning. This is for me as well. Because it's very, very easy to go back like dogs to your vomit and the way you, way you acted before years and years ago. Amen. There are good messages. You need to write them down. Anyway. Okay, you want to stand up and we'll take communion, please. We got a, we got a lot on today. Eli, Eli doesn't even know. I want him to share a testimony. <laughs> Father, we just thank you, Father God, as we come to the communion table right now, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. We humbly come to you, Lord. This is not a ritual church. This is real. Because my God, your God, he bled for you. He died for you regardless of where you've been. He loved you so much and he bled for you. He died for you. We do this in remembrance of what you have done for me. If you were the only one, there are people listening to us Right across the nations, you might not believe what I'm saying, but one day God will bring this to your remembrance. That he died for me while I was a sinner, same as you. And he, and he bled for you, he suffered for you to wash your sins away. What can wash my sins away? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Nothing, all your giftings, all your talents, spiritual or natural talents will never wash your sins away. All the work you do will never wash your sins away. That doesn't mean to say you slumber and do nothing, okay? Uh, but it's only the blood that can wash my sins away. And it's only the blood that can make me whole again. 
because he's the only one God who died and he rose again and we are serving a living God. We thank you, Jesus, for what you've done for me and my family, my loved ones. Thank you, Lord, wherever they are, Lord. You bled for them, you suffered for them, you protect them, you preserve them. Every family in this place, everyone at the sound of my voice, be on Zoom and YouTube, Lord, touch them right now. Reveal yourself in dreams and visions. Let the nation know that you are alive today. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. Let us eat together. Thank you, Lord, for the precious cup. Thank you, Jesus. We do this in remembrance that you stood at that whipping post and you thought of me, Lord. Your broken body and the blood that come out of you, Lord, for all our, all our sicknesses, all our diseases, every sin, Lord, the stain, the guilt, the shame, the condemnation, you took it all on your broken body. We believe right now as we come in agreement with one another, Lord God, that the heavens will open over this place today. And your Lord, a demonstration of your power will be displayed, displayed in this place today in Jesus' name as we drink together. Thank you, Lord. I believe we got an exciting morning this morning, okay? So God is going to do something mightily. God has been moving the last couple of Sundays. Revival broke in this place Sunday night, this Sunday night and last Sunday night. But I believe it's the building up with uh, Bill from Pensacola and with but Norm. Norm has been teaching and a lot of the messages, Paul's messages, Maureen's messages, Yara's messages. Yara's messages are going around the world, church. It's just increasing. And one of her messages is... In, in a, a few weeks, there's 2,000 some people watching it. And I do believe that the messages are going to be thund, hundreds of thousands and even millions are going to touch because we are not even pushing it out there. But this is without us doing it. God is pushing it out there because He honors His Word. He said, I am able to do exceedingly abundantly about all that you may ask or dare to dream or think of. So you do your bit and God will do His bit. Amen. You don't have to help God when He increases. He opens the heaven and He said He will pour out a blessing that you will not have enough room to contain it. That word is as good as any other word in the Bible, but you've got to believe that you will not have enough room to contain it. Amen. Amen, Amen Mandela. Amen. Amen. You might get another call today. Amen. <laughs> For next year or six months from now. Amen. Why not go on holidays every three or four months? Your father, your friend, the owner of heaven and earth, he, you know, he's in partnership with you, church. Don't limit him. Get that limitation right out of your system, out of your bloodline. And I pray that God is going to clean some bloodlines here. Amen. That your negative way of thinking is going to change from this day on. Amen? Amen. All right, so don't forget the transformation meetings, church. I can, I can talk for hours about what's happening. Yesterday was, un this week was unbelievable. Those who were there, you would, you would experience it, you know. So try and log in to uh, some of the transformation meetings, even for 10 minutes, 5 minutes, to at least take communion with us. And God will download. If you desire to be there, God will download it in your, in your dreams, what's been happening in the transformation meetings. Write that one down. I, I decree a thing. The Bible says you decree a thing, it will be established. If you desire to be at that prayer meeting and things are happening, God will download it in your dreams, church, and He will download it. You will get up and bang. God will say, say, say wow, we've been praying about this thing. You were not there, but God was there. <laughs> Amen. When you're asleep, you know that He's alive still. Amen. Your spirit is alive. He knows how to talk to you. Okay, and uh, don't forget the tithes and offerings. Uh, church, uh, keep giving to the Lord because uh, I was sharing during the week as well. Um, don't, um, you, you need to bring it, the tithes and offerings, to the storehouse, not the storehouses. Okay, you can't plant yourself in different places. Jesus said you, you will love, you, will, uh, you can't love two masters. 
Is that right? You can't love two churches or three churches. You can't love two pastors. You will love one and roast the other. You know roast pastor? <laughs> so, so bring it to the storehouse that God can supply. And if, if, if yeah, we, I don't have food in the house, or the next door neighbor doesn't have food in the house, and their children don't have food, I starve my wife and I'm feeding them. And then everybody claps their hands because I've done a good job. No, no. Charity begins at home. Amen? That's why he said, bring your tithes and offerings to the store. So that's enough of that. But uh, thank you for giving. Okay, thanks. All right, Eli, uh, as I told you. <laughs> church, uh, this, this message, I'm going to get Norm to share. There is so much church to share, but... Uh, I, I want to continue on from the last two uh, Sunday nights as well. Uh, if you want a title, there are two titles. Let go or um, I give you my nothing. You pick which one you want. They'll, they will all fit anyway. Okay, somehow when we finish, we'll see how we go. Okay, Leela, I wanted, I, wanted, I wanted to share mainly when you came and touched the... There is nothing magical about, about touching the prayer shawl, right? But when you understand the fullness of this thing, because after we, Norm, Norm thought a lot about it, and um, this is very precious to the Jewish people, so as Norm said, we don't wear this publicly because you're being in disrespect to them because you're a Gentile, okay? Just be a Gentile, and we are grafted in the tree. No one heard that one. Okay, so I don't want you to be a Jew, but uh, you're a Gentile, but I'll talk about Jews today as well as, as the Lord leads me. Uh, so I got people to just touch the hem of their garment and um, because they, the woman, remember the woman with the 12, 12 years, they touched the hem. It is actually those words, Norm, get the teaching of it, Norm's teaching on this. If you count it, it's 613, Norm, somewhere, 613, if you count the threads and the knots and all that, uh, the commandments of God in the Bible. So when the woman said, I want to touch the hem of his garment, she was touching God. She was touching God because she knew about the prayer shawl. The prayer shawl, and Paul the Apostle made the prayer shawl. His New Testament, he made the prayer shawls, okay? He put it like a tent. They said he was a tent maker, but it's a prayer shawl. Because when you put a tent, it's like a pole, and you cover yourself with a prayer shawl because you're covering yourself with the word of the living God. And there is a lot more teaching about it. But the, when the woman said, if I could only touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. So she touched the word of God and the word went into her and the 12 year blood disease drained out of her. So you share that testimony right now. If you, uh, What happened to you uh, last week? Actually, better if you start from the week before. Oh, glory to God. I'll stand over here because that's powerful, that thing right there. <laughs> um, basically, two weeks ago when um, the pastor got us to um, touch the hem of the garment, the, when, I, when, I, when I touched it, um, I just seen like um, gold just touch the fingertips and just went in all of my body and I hit the floor. I don't know how I landed on the floor, but um, when I hit the floor, uh, basically what I seen was... Um, all this black stuff just uh, starts spewing out of my mouth all on the floor. And when I came to, um, I thought like I was, you know, it, it was in the natural that I spewed as well. And I said, I ain't cleaning that mess up because there was like a lot of it that came out. And then um, last week when I, um, when I touched it uh, again, um, this time I just felt like um, my whole body just... Um, like I was just, it felt like my whole body was just, oh boy. It, it just felt uh, like the Lord, the Lord restored my youthfulness, basically. And it was just like, I feel like I'm 20 years younger than what I am. Like next year I'll be 40, but like I felt like I'm 20. So glory to God. Well, after the first week when I went swimming, um, I, I basically felt like I, um, I was just gliding along the water. It was like it was not much effort I had to do. I just felt like I was just gliding along the water. And I basically um, started doing like um, 
like the energy just came back into my body and I started doing like uh, 30, 40 and then 50 laps. And now it's just like I just feel like all the energy is back into my body. And like I said, I just feel like I'm totally like half my age with my body. I just feel like completely restored. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I basically God showed me last week was um, there was two, uh, two things that came to me. One was, um, sorry, there was three things that came to me. One was the Lord said a double portion. Um, the next thing I seen was two suitcases full of money. And the third thing I seen was um, a big aeroplane with Joanna and my name on it. One, two, one, two. Is that okay? Am I on? Thank you, Lord. This is, this is just outstanding. There's even financial breakthroughs. Right, I'll, I'll get to some of the, some of the testimonies. But if you, if just, just briefly, because there are people on YouTube that have never heard his story, right? So I just want to repeat myself. Some of you, most of you know it, but just bear with it because we are taking it into the nations around the world, Okay. So Eli, for about 15 years, he was under a demonic, I th believe it was a sort of witchcraft, Jezebelic spirit for 15 years. He was brought up in a Christian home, you know, uh, I I'm, mean, I'm Pentecostal home. You know, his father and mother were serving the Lord at that time, you know, but you know how issues happen in life and, and things, and he came under the control of it, and he was, under, he was not even coming anywhere close to his father and mother, but Tony and Helena had been praying for 15 years never came back and, um, uh, to them. And uh, seven years ago, he calls me. Seven years ago, he calls me under the influence of that demonic thing. And it took me about, about one, one and a half hours to try and get even a prayer to him for him to agree with something. And I asked him to release it and release his soul that he has sold to that particular person that the demonic devil was controlling him. Okay, there's a lot of details in that, but just to briefly to cover you up. Then... So he instantly I broke, broke that demonic control over there, cut him loose and asked God to be his father, his daddy. Instantly he packed his cases up. That very day, his sister went all the way to Casino, his casino, uh, four hours drive, picked him up that very day, and he came into our church for the last seven years. Right? And he was he's committed. And he don't get much money. I mean, you know, he was just got, uh, and he, he didn't have a car license. He didn't have a job. He didn't have a car. He, all that in the last seven years. And then about two, two, year, about two years ago, I think, before Tony passed away, uh, he rings me up. He, he couldn't swim. He started to swim, and, and he was doing a few laps. And then he, uh, he called me, and he, was, he said, I'm cramped up. I can't even swim. And then God revealed to him at seven years old, somebody, he was seven years old, when a guy pushed him underwater and took him, he was traumatized at that time. God delivered him and he started to swim again. Now I'm saying this is that even all that deliverance in the last seven years, this is, this is not training somebody to be a discipleship, but this is a discipleship from the heart. <laughs> like that. Because you can give them 10 steps of discipleship and they learn everything, how to baptize, how to, how to marry people, how to bury people, how to do this. They all, all the programs, this is the way to do it, this is the way to stand, this is the way to dress, this is the way to say the Bible and everything. But, but the problem, the heart is not being dealt with because he was crippled all those years. Yes. So this is true discipleship. God is dealing with these areas. And even in spite of him doing all that and moving in God and going from one level of glory to another, which is New Testament, he was still crippled and that black stuff came out of him only two weeks ago. Not because of me, because he touched the hem of his garment. Amen. Because he listened to the word of God. It's a word. It's like taking communion. There is nothing good in the plastic cup and a little bit of water, or juice in it, one dollar something from um, Aldi's. 
You know, but it's, it's something that you take and you meet. It's like water of baptism. I've said it many a times. Many people get into the water of baptism. They got wet and they came out. That's all happened. But you can, you can do all the ritual stuff and nothing happens. But there is nothing in the water. But it's your commitment for your heart that you're going to die with Jesus. You're going to be buried with Jesus. And then when you come up, the heavens open and he pours out a blessing that you will not have enough room to contain it. He keeps his word. The only problem is that we have got to go from one level of glory to another and all these things are rising up. That's why we have to go from one glo glory to another. But many churches are hiding these things up. It's all under the blood. It is under the blood, but if you've got it inside of you, it's not under the blood. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't, don't get upset with me, okay? Because some people don't like the truth. The truth hurts. It's supposed to hurt. It's not my fault. Don't take it against me. Yes. The truth is supposed to hurt you. Change it. We got the results. I, I told Eli that day, I said, Eli, something happened to you. I said, something not only happened to you, something happened to your two sisters. I said, as it broke off you, something happened to your two sisters. I had the privilege of praying for a sister a few days ago, Friday or whatever, I can't remember the dates, so much, so much things happening the last couple of days. And, and God just revealed to her, there was stuff there in her life, I don't want to get into any details, and revealed to her. Remember Joseph, he brought his brothers into the kingdom? Eleven brothers, murderous brothers. Amen? What did, what did G, uh, Joseph tell the brother? You meant it for bad. They tried to kill him. They tried to bury him. They tried to, you know, sold him. As you know the story. Go and read about Joseph. But he stood in the gap and he brought his eleven brothers into the kingdom. Right? His eleven brothers and two nations were affected because of one man. One man. Eli. I don't care who stands in the gap. I need to say this. I'm going outside my message, but I need to say this. Okay. Helling and God is a God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Don't be jealous. <laughs> they have been praying for years and years and years for their son church, and that's the results. Okay? Man look on the outside appearance, but God sees the heart. Tony's prayers are before the Lord. I thought about Tony today and tears poured out. Because I didn't value that guy because we got our opinions, isn't it? But God sees him in a different way to the way I see him. You know, he touched many people in his way. Sometimes he was Outside the boundary, but you know, but how many times have I got outside the boundary? I'm not going to even tell you. <laughs> but God answers a, a mother and a father's prayer church. And don't be jealous because God is going to bless that person. Now, I'm going to bring the balance here, okay? Now, Yara's message, you need to listen to it. Uh, last Sunday morning. It's an awesome message and she only shared a little bit about the hell she we went through as a child. Mm. Right? So, okay, Yara's mother and father did not pray for her. She didn't have a generational blessing like Helena and Tony and downloaded onto them because God, a thousand generations will be blessed because you are grafted in the tree. Is that right? Because Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Listen to the scriptures. Go and Google and listen to Galatians 3, 13 and 14 and you understand. You can say that the blessings of Abraham is yours and you're living like a pauper. You're broke, busted and disgusted. I'm giving you a way out today. Break off those wrong teachings, wrong concepts, wrong desires, wrong motivations, wrong beliefs. Just break them right off and come into God and open up your heart and let the King of glory get in. Because when your cup is right, then the river will flow out of your life and your children's children forever. Amen. Unstoppable river. Amen. God doesn't stop it, church. Yara did not have a mother and a father because her father really abused her when she was a child. So she was twisted, damaged for many decades of her life. 
But she said the scripture she used, she was in fear, paranoid, listen to all message, I'm not going to preach her message. But this is what she said, I sought the Lord and he answered me. So if you did not have a mother and father to pray for you, use Yara as an example. So can you see the balance now coming in? So don't be jealous of him. You keep on praying for him and rejoice with those who are rejoicing because he got two suitcases of, of stuff, money in his bank. You start rejoicing and start dancing and singing because your bags are coming down the way. Amen. <laughs> Truck loads are coming. Because he said he's going to pour out, a, pour out a blessing that you will not have enough room to contain it. Why do you end up for bags, church? Go for truckloads. Shakarama sombra katani masala barambai. Okay, I'll try to get to my message. He, 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 uh, when Friday I went to a place, uh, uh, Glennie San Anthony, put your hand up, Glennie San Anthony. Yeah, I went to their home. And while, I was, while, while we finished and we, we, we were praying for something, and, and while I was coming, coming out, there was a lady there. From, I, I assume she was in Sri Lanka because she didn't like my color. Anyway, yeah. <laughs> and she, she had a pain on her shoulder. So I, I knew that God was going to heal this lady. I, I knew God was, before, before I even prayed, you know, I asked her a you know, couple of things, and apparently she had fallen off a roof at uh, two. Plucking some umbrellas or something like that, is that right? And, and she fell off a roof. I said, what happened to the umbrellas? She hurt her shoulder. But there's a foot in Sri Lanka. Okay, so, so I prayed for her, and uh, a little bit of the pain went, or half of it. I prayed for her again, all the pain left. And there she, had, she had a 12-year-old kid and an 11-year-old kid. 11 years, the next one? 10 years, 10. 10-year-old kid there. And then Anthony and Gladys tells me, some of you have heard the story, but just bear with me because there are people on YouTube need to listen to this. Don't go away, don't switch off, just stay there. <laughs> you know the story, I, I have told you guys, some of you guys know the story. Glennie St. Anthony, 12 years ago, told me to pray for a niece who is bleeding at three months and losing the child. Right, you all remember some of you know the real story. So, uh, and then I said, yeah, no worries, I'll pray for her. And then before she got off the phone, she said, one year ago at three months, she was bleeding and lost the baby. Now, I had never seen this lady before. I never know her. I never, never knew she had a niece or anything like that. But so I said, give me the phone number. I'll call her. And I called her and I asked her, what happened to you one year ago when you lost that first baby at three months? Because I knew the devil is going to target this baby as well. She said there was two people who she was angry with. Listen to me, YouTube people. Two people she was angry with. She had forgiven one person and God brought it to her remembrance the other person she had not forgiven. I took her to a prayer and she forgave that person. The bleeding stopped and I met this lady on Friday with the 12-year-old son. Oh, and she has got another 10-year-old son. The devil, this is Jesus' word, gospel, church, gospel. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus comes that you will have life and have it more abundantly. Choose life. I, <laughs> Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Blessings and cursings is the power of your time. You watch that venom that is coming out of you or coming out of other people to strike you. But people don't read the other word. You eat the fruits thereof. Read the other part of the word. Death and life, blessings and cursing. You eat the fruits thereof. So watch what you confess. And if you can't control it, deal with the venom you got inside of you because he wants pure water to come out of you, sweet water. The New Testament, don't let sweet and bitter water come out of the same fountain. Yes. He made you in his image and likeness. He said, those who drink of this well will never thirst again. You will never run dry, church, because there is a river flowing out of the throne room of God out of you, that you can make the land to walk and the blind to see, amen? And these things and greater things will you do. You know, God just blessed me so much, church, to see that 12-year-old child there 
brought him all the way from Sri Lanka to bless me on Friday. That, that, even, that was not even my message. Remember the title of my message? Amen. Let go. Let go. And Boreen also preached a message before. Or, or I give you my nothing, okay? Now, Elijah and Elisha, you know the story, right? I'm just going with 1 Kings 19, 19. And Elijah went, uh, went to Elisha and he threw a cloak around him. And I was thinking, I only got it this morning. Threw a cloak around him. I don't know. I don't know. I got to, I got to, I got to ask Norm to be, do some research on that one. Put it around Elisha. Remember Elisha? Double portion. What did he see when he fell down last week? Two suitcases and a double portion. Amen? Oh, well, you work it out. He put it upon him, church. Paul the Apostle, New Testament. He prayed on aprons, handkerchiefs, and it went to the person and demons came out. Was there any, any, anything good in the, in, the, in the cloth or in the handkerchief or the apron? Probably a dirty apron. But it's the anointing that was greater than the dirt in it. We all had dirt, I mean. But he cleansed us with his blood. It's interesting, the, the woman who touched the hem of his garment, remember blood disease? Blood disease for 12 years. When he fell on the ground two weeks ago, the first time he, he touched it, he fell on the ground. He said all this black stuff came out of him. I believe that's for the generational bloodline. You don't even have to know the details, church. As he touched the hem of his garment, all that contaminated blood came out of that woman. And Jesus said, who touched me? Your faith has made you whole. Not the garment. It's touched Jesus. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us, which is Jesus. So Paul the Apostle didn't send the prayer shawl, but he sent a cloth. He sent an apron. He sent the Word and healed them. Exactly. He watches over his Word to perform it. Start putting the Word out there. The fruits thereof, the good fruits, the good river. If you're angry with somebody, you know, they said, stay up till you're, till, till you're glad. Get the bitterness, get the, get the stuff out of you. Amen. Time is flying, church. This is, um, this is so good. So he put the cloak on him and... Um, let me go. And 21, it says... And Elisha then left his, his oxen uh, and ran after Elijah, right? So there was something in the cloak that he put. He ran after him. He ran after him. Amen? Like Paul the Apostle said, follow me as I'm following Christ. Don't, don't, don't have two masters. Amen? Like I said, two pastors, you roast one really well and you love one. Amen? <laughs> That's my interpretation. <laughs> Uh, and, he, and he was following. And Elijah, he throws the cloak on him. And then uh, there was a lot coming to me, but I'm trying to fit it, fit it on because I want Norm to share something. Let me kiss my, Elijah says to Elijah, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come with you. And look at Elijah says, go back, go back. Uh, Elijah replied, what have I done to you? So that shows me that, you know, Jesus said, I will not do what the, what the father tells me. So Elijah was a prophet of God, you know, the miracles and all. So he, he, God probably told him, just put it over him. It's none of your business, just do what I say. But that had something, church, that, that got, got a hold of him because he became uh, his, his servant, right? So Elisha left, left him and went back. He took his, his, uh, his yoke of ox and slandered them. He burnt uh, the plowing equipment to cook the meat and then, and gave it to the people. And they ate, he said. Oh, naturally they'll eat. Then, then he sat out and followed Elijah and he became his servant. Church, do you know what he did? He let go of the past and he gave his nothing to follow God. 
He let go of the past. He burnt his oxen. He couldn't go back again because there was nothing there for him. Because he had a touch from God. He didn't even know. And church, he, he was rebuked. He did a lot of things, you know, with Elisha. But then when he, when he finished and Elijah went, went up with the chariots, amen? He said, ask, he said what, do you, what do you want of me? He said, I want a double portion. I want a double portion. Ha! Glory! Church, don't. He was following a man, honored the man, followed the man, but he got a double portion. You know why? Elijah was a good teacher. He knew the God of Elijah. He was bypassing Elijah, but he knew the God of Elijah. A double portion. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly about all that you may dre- dre- ask or dre- dare to dream of. And you know the story? You know, it's history. He, he's, he moved in greater miracles than Elijah. Is that right? Ma- Matthew, uh, Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, whoever wants to be my disciples must deny himself, themselves, and take up his, his, their cross and follow me. The, the Amplified Bible says, and take up the cross and follow me. Cleave steadfastly to me, conform wholly to my examples in living and in, in deed, even in dying also. That's let go in. That is let go in the whole lot. Okay, there is so many other scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15, um, 31. Um, you know, like Paul said, I die daily. But I want to go to this one. Um, in Ruth 2, Boaz replied, uh, I've been told all about what you have done to your mother-in-law since the death of your husband, how you left your father and mother and the homeland and came to live with a people who did not, you did not know. This is beautiful. May the Lord repay you for what you have done. May you be richly rewarded by the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to find refuge. Some of you will get it. You know what Elijah was saying? You are no no more Gentile. She was a Gentile woman. Now we are Gentiles grafted in the tree. Is that right? So... and, and he, he, you can see that the, it shows he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And that's what he was saying. You have given up a people. She let go of the past. Church, she had got nothing. I give you my nothing. Because Naomi had nothing. Her husband died. Ruth's husband died. She had nothing. Absolutely nothing. Is that right? And Naomi said, go away for both the daughters. One one obeyed the devil and went back, okay? Sorry. But the other one, Ruth said, your God will be my God. And your people will be my people. And look at what Boaz said. Go and read his church in Ruth. You know what happened to her? She was a Gentile woman like you and me. Amen? Gentile man, Gentile woman, right? Amen? Jesus, the blood of Jesus. Jesse... David and Jesus was born out of the Gentile, Gentile woman around the family line. The curse was broken. Yes. I said the curse was broken. The contaminated blood came out. Church, you will eat the fruits thereof, church. I said you will eat the fruits thereof, good or bad. There was a time in Yara would have shared this. I, I think she shared this testimony many uh, a while ago. She bought, you know, may, I think... 40, 50 years ago, well, that just tells our age. Sure. You know, a long, long time ago, decades ago, she bought this, uh, um, this um, dress or something from a second-hand shop, right? And uh, she threw it at the back of the uh, wardrobe in the dirty clothes basket at 12 o'clock in the night. It got life and it started to move, <laughs> you know? And anyway, she, the story is that she got this lady there and then uh, she got delivered out of this thing that was there, this fear came in. So good, 
when you play over aprons and handkerchiefs, that will carry an anointing into that place and that person will be healed. But the bad will remain there as well. We have gone to Holmes Church and the atmosphere in that Holmes was unbelievable. When Yara and I prayed and cast out those stuff out of those homes, Yara seen three men running down the stairs with hoods on them, you know, with swords and hoods on them. Um, uh, there's so, so many other testimonies that I pray. I prayed for another lady on the phone. Um, her husband left her. This is about 15 years ago or something like that. And he was never coming back. And she had a problem with her mother-in-law when they first got married. Some of you know the story. I'm not going to go in a lot of details. And God revealed to it. She released her father. Was, her husband was not going to come back 12 years married. Not going to come back. Right? There was no way. If you just believe me, because that's a true story. Right? And uh, so God revealed that there was a curse from the mother-in-law because she bought a tie and he, she didn't like it and all sorts of stuff. And on the marriage day, there was a curse on the marriage. Death and life is in the power of the tongue, right? Blessings and cursings in the power of the tongue and you will eat the fruits thereof. That is the most important thing. So for 12 years, she suffered in the marriage, right? So I took her. She released the mother-in-law 12 years later and the husband came back with a bunch of roses, Right, the reason I'm telling you this story is, while I was ministering to her, she said all this black stuff that came out of Eli came out of her. That's what she told me wow. to her 15 years ago. They are married now over 30 years or whatever it is. You know, multiply and you make the figure, right? They're married. They, she never, you know, there was no problem. He came back with a bunch of roses. You, you can destroy your marriage. You can destroy your children. It's up to you. Just, you can learn the Bible backwards and know the Hebrew and the Greek and the Latin and the French and you can know everything, which is good. You need to learn it. But if it is not transforming your life, you're not going from one level of glory to, I'm not satisfied where I am. Are you satisfied where you are? I'm certainly not satisfied where I am. When I go to the shopping center, they don't fall down for the power of God. But that is subject to change. It can happen this afternoon or two years from now because I know God has taken me from glory to glory. To whom much is given, much is required. That doesn't give me the license to go and sin. Okay? But it's, I, I needed a lot of grace to where I am today, believe me. Believe me. So he, what, what Boaz was saying, you know, when he, when he said this, under... Now God of Israel, even God telling you, rather God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge. And that's exactly where you guys are at. Because of the blood of Jesus, you got the covering. When Jesus said, when Jesus said, go to the closet, that's what he means, not to hide yourself in the closet. Do this in secret. You put God upon you. I'm not asking you to do it uh, publicly and show how, how, what a saint you are and, and put, make it a magic wand or anything like that. You know, uh, when you get the meaning of the prayer shawl, I believe you'll want to put it on in your prayers. Particularly if you're going through some trauma, you will get a prayer shawl and you will get into your room. I'm not telling you to do it because you need to get the revelation of it. Now, I had a prayer shawl at home and it was still in the packet till a few days ago. Once I got the understanding, I put it on. It's like taking communion. You know, there is nothing. Oh, well, I took communion. I'm a good boy. <laughs> I went to church. I put my tithes in. Amen. So what he's saying is he's preparing his bright church. That's what he was saying. Amen. All, all right, Norm, you, you come and finish it off and then we'll, I'll pray for everybody here. And um, Just, uh, yeah, just whatever comes about the pressure and then I'll pray. <laughs> just put them on the spot and they can, yeah, here, you want to take this thing. Ah, okay, that's fine. It's all yours. Eh? <laughs> Ah, that's yours, is it? Yeah. Good morning. I'll be really quickly. I just want to remind you what this is about. God wants us healed. Healed to fulfill our purpose. Could you just bring this up a little bit louder? Yeah. Um, let's go. God wants us healed to fulfill our purpose. A lot of this is about changing how you see yourself and how you think about yourself. What I've been learning about healing is that the mind affects the emotions and the emotions affects the physical. So it's like if you don't think the right way about yourself, 
it's like the whole system gets out of whack. And if <laughs> you're emotional, if you're in fear, it'll affect your organs, it'll affect your whole body. If you're in anxiety and you're stressing at life and things like that, it's what's going on here is affecting your emotions, your heart, and it's affecting the whole body. So it's like what this is doing is this reminds you of truth. I mean, the first thing that they say is, remember the 12 spies that went to the land? Straight after this, uh, that passage, he says, put this on. Wrap these cords. Wrap these around your hands and wear it. It's a continual reminder not to look at the circumstances, not to look at what's going on in your life, but look at me, look at God. This is a reminder of who God is. I'll just quickly look. Um, it's a robe of priesthood. You're clothed in royalty. You're meant to be wearing this and reminded, I'm clothed with God. I, it's a garment of salvation. <laughs> I mean, what the rabbis would teach is the four corners of Kanaf is actually a reminder of the four covenant promises of God in Exodus chapter 6 is what we take communion on. I will deliver you. I will redeem you. I will sanctify you. I will make you my people and I will be your God. In other words, I'll be your daddy. I'll be your father. I'll take care of your needs. But you need to keep reminding yourself of those covenant promises and not to look at the circumstances, not to look at what's going on, but look at him. <laughs> That's another one. Um, they're garments of light. Psalm 104, 1, 2 says, Bless the Lord, I my soul. Oh, Lord, my God, you are great. You are clothed with splendor and majesty, covering yourself with light as a garment. So when you put this, what they teach is, this is straight out of the Talmud. When you put on your talit, you should think that the light of the infinite one is hidden within the talit that you wrap yourself in. And when the wings of the talit cover you, you are covered with the wings of the infinite one. <laughs> it's like, if you're inside this thing, it's like you and God. It's personal. It's, one, it's like I'm wrapped in his wings. I mean, think of, you know, you want to be a superhero and it's like, oh yeah, I can stand up to anything. You're wrapped up in this. It's just you and him. The world can't come in. But that's how you're meant to think about yourself. See how it's changing how you see yourself. Change how you think. I'm wrapped in light. I'm wrapped in God's presence. We've seen shadow of wings. I mean, <laughs> Pastor Ainsley just talked about that. It means that you'll have the protective covering of your father. And this leads to just the last one. I'll just share this real quick. Zechariah 8.23 says, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, in those days, these days, ten men from the nations of every tongue, the nations, it's talking about us Gentiles, it says, shall take a hold of the robe of a Jew, a single Jew. Rabbinic tradition says that single Jew is Messiah, Jesus He's saying that ten, us, the nations, when we take a hold of the corner of this, <laughs> uh, saying, let us go with you, for you have heard it. God is with you. See, in um, Jewish tradition and marriage, they have the rabbi put this on. And the, the, um, the groom who wants to marry the bride, each would grab a corner of the garment and... When they did, they were joined, joined with him. And I believe what God was showing me is that when we as the nations obey that scripture and we grab a hold of the corner of, it, of the Jew, Rabbi Jesus, then we're joined in relationship. We're unified and become one with him. That's why you get healed. So it's like if you want to be healed, <laughs> and this is the picture he gave me when I was cleaning my teeth that we as a church, if we grab a hold of the corner of his garment and we see ourselves as united with him, married with him, one with him, we change how we think, we're going to see his healing. We're going to be healed because <laughs> to fulfill our destiny and our purpose as Gentiles, to bring about the holiness and the glory of God to earth. That's all I have. Well, Alan, thank, thank you, Lord. Yeah, <laughs> you know another thing that uh, Dom was saying too. When the, what do you call that? Uh, that hood, the hoopa. 
Hupa, hupa, yeah. So when, when the husband and the wife, they come and get married, they come under the hupa. Hupa. And apparently the Jewish men, from the age of 12 or 13, they, they wear one of these, right? So apparently he, he comes and his wife is next to him, but the hupa is coming under God's covering, okay? So you're married, the cords of three strands cannot be easily broken. And he would do, uh, you know, not that one, the one in Malachi, um, yeah, the son of righteousness uh, will rise with healing in his wings. It's not a bird that is flying. This, this is what he was talking about. If I touch the hem of his garment, it's, it's the word of God, right? So what the husband does is in the hopper, right? Uh, he comes in and he takes the corner of his garment and he puts it over his bride and saying, from now on, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to put a shield around you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to supply for you. And that's what he's, he's this is, these are the Jewish men, that's what they do when the, uh, so all men, you know, wants to be married, just, uh, that's the protection. They come under your covering, your protection. So that's the way they did it, okay? But it's, it's still, for us, it's the word of God. Is that right? Okay, uh, Maureen, you, you had something before, and I believe this is what the Lord is going to do. You want to read that out, please? Yeah. Uh, Maureen had this during the worship. Uh, you stay there, yeah. <laughs> Be healthy. <yeah. laughs> Can't stand up. Uh, God is already moving, amen, mm-hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, I felt this was very much in line. Um, during wash- worship, especially the last song, I had a sense that um, God was breaking shackles off minds and um, bringing people into the destiny that he has planned for them. So it's like there's a transformation and, and a new thing happening in the minds, just a, a complete transformation in the Amen. mind. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 During worship, God showed me that people are being robbed. And, Helena, you got a word about the eagle, about soaring like an eagle. And I can't, you gave lots of words, but it was, I'm thinking, I can't, I can't believe it because that's how God works. People are being robbed. You see, he, he gives you the gifts and he gives you the answers to your prayers. But like, I'm going to use my magpies, they nest high up in the, in the eucalypt tree. They, they high, high up in their safety, in their nest where they know they are safe and protected. They get given a big, beautiful, fresh piece of meat some I give it to them and they take that and then the bin chicken comes and chases them to steal what I've given them and do you know what the magpie does runs runs and the bin chicken steals the gift that I gave it to bless the devil. Yes. The devil. The devil is chasing you. He wants you to drop the gift for fear of him. When all you've got to do, if this silly magpie would fly high up to the nest, high where God has given the protection for you, <clears throat> you will not lose the gift. Don't let the devil keep you on the ground. With that thing in your mouth, you go to the place you know you're protected, where you know you're in mm. peace, where you know you're covered, because he's given you that gift to make you grow. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. That's awesome. Amen. So, okay, I'm going to pray for you guys that you can come forward and, and touch. Like I said, there is nothing, nothing in this, but just see Jesus, not me. But the Lord, Lord is here. But the presence, can anyone say that the presence of the Lord was not here in the worship and he's still here? Amen. Because it's his word being preached. And, you know, like Paul the Apostle said, I don't come in enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration and in power, right? So you come and touch this because you're touching Jesus. Okay, it's like taking communion or water the baptism or uh, many things that we do in praying for prayer cloths. There is nothing, you know, in, in this like, but God told Norm, actually, while he was brushing his teeth, God said, he actually seen a vision of people touching it. And he, he didn't want to do it. And he finished the message. He explained a lot more about this. Go and listen to those messages. And he went and sat down. 
Now, I came out to close the meeting, and for some reason, I picked the prayer shawl out, and I just used a couple, I was just about, and I said, look, no, just, just come and touch. And that's what happened from then on. Man, revival broke in this place, you know? So let the Lord come and uh, just come. It's not, it's not me, it's not the prayer cloth, but it's like you're putting the covering of God upon you. Say, God, I want a breakthrough in my finances. I want a breakthrough in my, in my children. I want a breakthrough in my, in my marriage. I want a breakthrough, God, because I've been robbed enough. Once you come under His covering, you will never be robbed. You will never be robbed, okay? Thank you, Lord Jesus. You know, another thing too, thanks Julie for coming out, because I, I want to share this church. Just, just be quiet, just uh, put it down just a little bit, Norm, just a little bit down. Uh, Julie was touched. She was on Zoom. Julie was on Zoom, and you were touched uh, last week. Now, she didn't have a, uh, the prayer shawl with her. Uh, under, did you have a prayer shawl at home? She did not have a prayer shawl at home, and she, did, she didn't touch it because she was on Zoom. Pretty long hands. How, how far do you live from here? Amen. Oh, what happened to you? So, uh, I wasn't actually Is even all? paying full attention because I was busy doing other things, but I was half listening. And I heard Emma say that... It's on? Yeah, can you hear? She, that she got healed in the middle of her back. And I was just praising God for Emma. Praise God. Thank you, Lord, that you touched Emma. And I got up about three days later and I thought, this is really weird. Every morning I get up and I've got a pain in my back. And for three days I didn't have this pain in my back. And I just suddenly realised it. And I realised that when God touched Emma's pain in her back, He also touched mine. But it just took me three days to figure it out. <laughs> there, there was, an, uh, Eddie, Eddie comes on Zoom and he was touched. He fell down for the power of God in his home. That's uh, quite a few kilometers away from here, about mm. 10 kilometers away from here where he lives, right? Uh, so God is doing something. There was another uh, 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 gentleman who had... Um, uh, it was a young guy, I think about him about his 20s or 30s. He's got a mental you know, a problem with him at the back. He came and touched it, actually plucked the garment from me. And, and he actually uh, took it off me. I thought, oh God, he's got the prat cloth, amen? <laughs> so, and, and he got up and he ran up and down, this guy. And he, the mother told Emma, he always used only one word at a time. And on his way home, he used a whole sentence just by touching the hem of his garment. And the guy was really, he, he was making a lot of noise at the back there because he had a lot of issues in his life, right? But God is going to heal the brokenhearted. He's going to set the captives free and bring their soul. Whether he's going to use this prayer cloth today, you know, I pray over, over the phone and these people are touched over there. So it's your faith, not in what I'm saying or in me or anything, but your faith is in God's word. Okay, so you're touching him. Father God, we just thank you, Lord God, right now.